of the most important things for combinations in this and triangle play is these two double pivots. These two double pivots are so important in all phases of play in a 4 2 3 one They're the key part, especially in build-up, okay? So whatever centre-back has the ball, let's say, that sided uh, pivot needs to be higher and the opposite pivot needs to be deeper. Why? Create a little triangle there, create a little triangle here. So it can go up to one pivot, down and through. Little triangle here. No matter what side that happens on, happens over here too, this can happen. One pivot can go up, one pivot can go down. Whatever side the ball's on, that pivot goes up. The other pivot goes down. The 4 2 3 1 allows for so many rotations too. If you're lacking wingers, you can have a midfielder out here, they can come in, and then you can have a higher, higher fullback. And then a, so much more can happen. There's so much flexibility in a 4 2 3 1. For the out of possession side of a 4 2 3 1, it's also very important and it's very similar to other formations. It's quite easy to make it work. So let's say their centre backs have started with the ball. Your striker's job is just to force play in one direction. You don't want to just press them like this and we, the rest of the team don't know where it's going to go. This striker comes on, maybe forces it wide, the rest of your team can come across. This number 10 is stopping the ball into the middle. Your double pivots can do the same. One of them can come across, one of them can come slightly deeper to scan, and so can your wingers and the rest of your team. It's very good for staying compact. You've got players in the right places, both in and out of possession. The key issues I see in a 4 2 3 1 is no designated pressing structure. So I often see these four players are just the ones pressing because they've not been told to do otherwise. So these four are pressing, and then these six are kind of a unit, and it creates a massive gap in between here once they've pressed, and then the other team can just play through. You also have to define what your wingers are doing. Are they wingers? Are they left sided midfielders, right sided midfielders? Out of possession, do they come back here? Because a lot of the time they'll think they're wingers, and the number 10 and the striker will also think, oh, well, we're attacking players, they won't track back so much. You have to do a lot of work in a 4 2 3 1, but ultimately it's easy to implement and easy to get working and easy to get going. But there's a lot of room that you can do progressions and a lot of room to make it work for your team.